everyone, my name is Atila Kawauchi and today I'm gonna give you a quick guide of how to start airbrushing. I paint miniatures, but this guide can be applied for other areas like drawings, t-shirts or small canvases. And if you like my content, consider to become a member of the channel. For a very small amount, you can help a lot. So let's check it out! First thing you need for your own safety is to buy a mask. You can buy one from 3M, like the one I'm using here, which is one of the best of the market and will protect you 100%. But if you get a simpler version like this one I'm showing now, it won't protect you 100%, but it's better than nothing. There are several types of airbrush. For most cases, including miniature painting, I recommend a dual action airbrush. This basically means you push the trigger down to release the air and you pull the trigger back to release the paint from the cup. You can control the quantity of the paint depending on how further you pull the trigger. I personally find the top gravity airbrushes are the more versatile ones, especially if you are working with small to medium surfaces, like miniatures, small canvas like A3 size or t-shirts. But if you are planning to buy a side load airbrush, you need to pay attention, especially if you are left handed like me, because they are usually made for right handed people. But in terms of usage, I found they are convenient when you are working with larger amounts of paint. There are several airbrush brands. Most of them are good quality. Which one you get is a matter of preference in my opinion. Brands like Badger, Iwata, Harder and Steambag or Posh will do just fine. And if you happen to be a Brazilian like me, you can search for brands like Gatti and Elaga. Prices may vary depending on where you live, but the entry models of the brands I mentioned are usually a good option, especially if you are a beginner. The needle slash nozzle size is usually a concern for beginners, but the rule of thumb is smaller the needle nozzle, more diluted the paint should be. So in this case we consider a dot five mm millimeters nozzle needle as a bigger one and a dot 2 needle as a smaller one. But it doesn't mean you can't use a very diluted paint in a bigger nozzle needle. So a dot 5 or dot 4 millimeter size is a good one to start with. To help you decide, you can also think about the technique you want to use and if it requires the paint to be thinner or thicker. There are some generic airbrushes in the market. I'll be honest with you, I hate those. In my opinion, they are very frustrating, especially for beginners. And I'll tell you why. Most of those generic ones will have a tip like this one. Those are very likely to break if you are using this tool for the first time. This tip is a very important part for the durability of the tool. And you will need to screw and unscrew this several times if the airbrush is getting clogged or if you need to clean it deeply. If you apply too much force when screwing, it will break and you probably need to buy another one. And here's another problem, most of those generic airbrushes don't have spare parts to buy, so you probably need to buy another airbrush. Do you see where I'm getting? When I was a beginner myself, I broke the tip of my generic airbrush three times. And yes, I had to buy three new airbrushes. And this wasn't just me, I know some friends that have the same problem and I know some subscribers of my channel who also did the same thing of breaking the tip. Of course nowadays I can operate those generic brushes without clogging and without having to unscrew the tip in order to clean it. But it took me a lot of experience for this to happen. And that's why I don't recommend those generic airbrushes. Most people that swear for their cheap airbrushes are either very lucky or very experienced painters. If you don't feel like this is your case, go with a decent brand, or at least one that provides spare parts. The other thing you need to invest your money is to buy a compressor to push the air to your airbrush. The best in terms of compressor is the one with an air tank. I don't think they are really necessary, especially for starting now. There are cheaper compressors that comes without the air tank and they will probably fit your needs for a long time. There are some well-known compressor brands, but to be honest with you, as long as they look like this one, they are in the same category, you will do just fine with any brand. Between your compressor and your airbrush, there is a hose. There are two basic types. My preferred one is this one because it seems more durable, but the other one will also work just fine. You just plug the hose on both compressor and the airbrush and you're good to go. You can use almost any paint in your airbrush, as long as it is properly diluted. Most paint brands will have their specific paint 
thinner. If you are using water-based acrylics, you can also use water to dilute your paints. I personally think water makes the paint harder to control, and as an alternative, you can use Windex to dilute your water-based acrylics. Keep in mind this is a workaround, the better solution will always be to use the proper thinner. In the ideal world, you mix your painting thinner in a separated pot or tray, and once it's mixed, you can throw the mixture into the cup. However, since I'm lazy, most of the time I just mix everything inside of the cup directly. I know this is not a good example, but I do this since day one, and since I never had any major issue, I think it saves some time and it's worth trying. When applying the paint, you should always try to use thin layers and spray more air than paint through your air brush. Another good practice is to always do the first burst away from your work, so that any excess paint in the tip will not splatter on your work. You should also wait a bit between each layer and let each layer dry a bit before spraying the next one. This way time will vary depending on the climate of your country. Here in Brazil, the paint dries super fast. Another good practice is don't keep a continuous spray in the same place, or else you have a high risk of paint spiders showing up on your work. This happens when there is too much paint in the same place and the air starts to push it away. When you finish airbrushing or you need to swap colors, you need to clean your airbrush. You have several options like airbrush cleaning solutions, just water, Windex, alcohol or nail remover. With an old brush, I clean the cup and I spray the excess on my cleaning station. If you don't want to buy a cleaning station, you can do it with a DIY solution, but it's very important to have a proper place to dump the excess. To clean the tip of the airbrush, I like to use a swab with Windex or an airbrush cleaning solution, or even use an old brush. Next, you need to check if your needle is clean, especially at the tip. Some airbrush models will require you to remove the back part in order to remove the needle. Others will require a little bit less effort in order to remove the needle. You can clean the needle with a brush, swab or just pinching the needle and pulling it back always in the opposite direction of the tip. Mine here looks good, so I'm good to go. I hope with these informations you will be able to find a good airbrush. Choose a good airbrush will ease your way into airbrushing. I hope you find this guide helpful and if you do so, please like this video and please consider subscribing. But keep in mind, most of my content is in Brazilian Portuguese. My idea is to expand this and bring more English videos to the channel. While this doesn't happen, check my playlist with all English videos I did so far. Abração e até mais!